Um, just a couple of notices before we begin our worship this morning. Um, you'll all know that we are now in tier four, um, but that legally public worship can still take place. So please do stick to your plans for coming to St Mary's. It does, of course, go without saying that all advice on precautions remains in place and we have increased the spaces between your chairs even further so that you feel more safe. Like me, I also suspect you are lamenting over the Christmas plans that now can't take place, but please know that you are loved and you are in my thoughts and my prayers and that Christ and his mass have not been cancelled. So let's just take a couple of moments quiet as we come into his presence afresh, thinking about those people who are at home and on their own, who aren't able to be with us and worship with us.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. So let's pray to Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned to Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. So let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. But that same night, 
the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed the judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Today's psalm is Psalm 89. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry out to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter one, beginning at verse one. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord.
Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? The mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfilment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favour on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
and we can now perhaps understand why. And this is the context for Paul's letter to the Romans and our reading today, where he seeks to encourage both Jews and Christians alike about how they should live and worship together, not only for their mutual benefit, but also because of what lay ahead of both of these people uh, with these terrible wounds. I guess we would consider that we are living in a very difficult time now, which of course we are cut off from families and friends, unsure perhaps of what lies ahead tomorrow, and yet, even in the midst of that, we live in relative safety. Rashid lives in the Sinai Peninsula. He is 17, when Islamic militants begin kidnapping and killing Coptic Christians. Their goal is to force them out. They shot Rashid's father, who was a vet, in the head in front of his wife and his young children. But you know what Rashid's response was? I forgive the ones who killed my dad and sent him to be with Jesus. Imagine facing torture and death for just five words. I believe in Jesus Christ. And yet this was the reality of Christians living in Rome and is for 245 million Christians today as we worship in this place. Five words which make no sense to someone who doesn't believe. In today's reading, Paul uses four words in verse 7 common to the Jewish mind, but to also the average gentleman, Gentile mind, made no sense. The first of these four words are beloved in God, which was an unusual term for the Gentiles because every kind of Gentile faith and religious practice at the time believed that God needed to be paid off because he was always angry. In 1741, the preacher Jonathan Edwards preached the famous sermon, Sinners, in the hands of an angry God. It had a tremendous impact upon the course of Christian history, but the truth is, God isn't always angry. In the Psalms we read, for his anger is fleeting, his favour lasts a lifetime. The Christian faith stood as an anathema because it taught redemption from a loving father who is unchanging due to his unshakable love for his people. Paul then uses the word saints. You will have heard me several times preaching about our sainthood. Saints were people set apart, but Gentiles felt as if they were born to be part of this world and not separate from it. Then there is grace to which Jews were the unmerited favour of God. But again, that made no sense to the Gentiles because they believed they had to work in order to get God's favour. Finally, the peace of God. To the Jewish mind, peace was gained through the Old Testament sacrifices and to the Christians through the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross. And so Paul sentence to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You're no good, you're ugly, you're useless, you're worthless and you will never amount to anything. You are stupid, lazy and no way. You've messed up everything you've ever tried and you will never accomplish anything worthwhile in your life. I wonder if any of those sound familiar. I've heard them and maybe you have too. But hear them enough and you will start to believe them. Believe them enough, and you will live in the negativity of them. After Fred Astaire's first screen test in 1933, a memo from the director of MGM Studios said, This man can't act. He's slightly bold, but he can dance a little bit. Fred Astaire kept that memo over the fireplace of his Beverly Hills home. An expert said of the famous football coach Vince Lombardi, he possesses minimal football knowledge and he lacks motivation. Lombardi earned $30 million a year. Louisa May Alcott, the author of Little Women, was advised by her family to go and get a job as a servant or a seamstress. 
Her book has never been out of print in 179 years and has sold 1.78 million copies. So much for the opinion of others. And yet people's words have the power to cut us to the core. To the believers living in the vilest city in the world, Paul uses the same words of them as the Father does of Jesus. My beloved. But unconditional love is something that most of us find incredibly difficult to accept and understand. As you know, weddings are a part of what vicars do. And I've heard so many couples say vows to each other, declaring their undying love for each other for all eternity, only to hear that within a year or two, they can't stand the sight of each other. I read of a wedding photographer who makes everybody pay their entire bill before the wedding because he's experienced on so many occasions couples who haven't even lasted long enough to get the photos that he's had developed. I know of one pastor who routinely tells his congregation that he loves them, but when one of them, who was a member for 40 years, had a brain tumor, he never even visited them. My point is, love is hard both to give and to receive at times because we are human and we are broken. But God's love is different, it is permanent, it is unconditional, and it is never reliant upon us or what we do or don't do. If God's love depended upon our goodness or our consistency, we would be in a whole lot of trouble. Of course, all of us fail, all of us are broken somewhere, and yet, in that reading, God calls us his saints, his beloved. A married couple were at Disneyland for their honeymoon where they sat down in Cinderella's castle to have lunch. After they'd eaten, one of the waitresses who was in character said to the husband, Is there anything else that my lord would like? Yes, he said. I'd really like my wife to serve me like this and call me lord every single day. The waitress then turned to his wife and said, My lord desires to be treated as a king. May I have a reply on your behalf? But of course, said his wife. Tell him he spent too much time in fairyland today, and as soon as he buys you a castle, then you'll start treating him like a king, otherwise you'll still kiss the toad that you love every morning. <laughs> you will recall the mother of James and John, the apostles, who asked Jesus if her sons could sit one on his left and the other on his right in his kingdom. It's human nature to want to be the best, to want to be first, and yet the Gospels we read say that to be first we must be last, we must be servants, and yet we are still called saints, beloved of God. I think, and I'm sure you do, some people think more highly of themselves than they truly ought, and at the same time others think less of themselves than they really should. Getting the right balance is hard, but if we can learn to receive God's love for us, reflect and live in the good of it, its sacrifice and its grace, then learning to love and be loved in a holistic way can surely be achieved. I'm not sure that I would ever want to introduce myself to anybody as Saint Grant because there are times when I don't act like a saint. Yet, that is what God calls me every day. He calls you the same every single day and the person that is set next to you. We are not saints one day and sinners the next. And that's because sainthood is not achieved by what we do, but because of our hope and our faith and our trust in what Jesus has accomplished for us. Writing to the Corinthians, Paul says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone, and the new has come. Of course, the devil who hates us loves nothing more than to remind us of our past failures. He whispers in our ears, do you remember when you did that? Do you remember what you thought about them, and were still said about them? Do you remember what you watched, and how you behaved? How can you possibly be a saint? Someone's prayer for the day went like this. Dear God, so far today I've been alright. I haven't gossiped. 
I've not lost my temper, I haven't been grumpy, nasty or selfish, and I'm really glad about all that. But in a minute, I'm going to get out of bed, and I'm probably going to need a whole lot of help. Amen. Isn't that so true for every one of us? The reality is that we will never be worthy of God's love, His peace, or anything else that He has to offer, save His judgment. It is only through Christ and His death on the cross that we are able to stand in His presence. I was always told when the devil comes and reminds you of your past, turn to him and remind him of his future. An old legend told of a young boy who found an eagle's egg and hoping to help the egg and the bird in it to survive, put it in a chicken's nest. The little eagle hatched along with all the little chicks and grew up. All his life he thought he was a chicken and he did exactly what chickens do. He scratched in the dirt for seeds and pet insects and learned to cluck and an occasional cock of the When he saw the other birds try to fly, he followed their example and he flew no more than a couple of feet off the ground because that's what chickens do. One day he saw a magnificent bird far above the sky. It was gliding with graceful majesty on the powerful currents of the wind. What a fabulous bird, the eagle said to his chicken companions. What is it? Well, that's an eagle, they said. It is the chief of birds. But don't worry, you'll never be like him. So the little eagle never gave it another thought, and he lived and died as a chicken. Sadly, so many of us Christians live with a similar crisis of identity. We've been so engraved by the world as to who we are and who we are not, that we find it difficult to believe and accept who God says we are and what he intends for each one of us. Throughout Advent, we have looked at various passages which have invited us, called us, to live lives worthy of our calling. But if we don't believe first and foremost who we are, how can we live in it? We have no good problem believing in the holy apostles. We have no problem accepting that certain places or things are holy. But doesn't something become holy because of its proximity to holiness? Take off your shoes, God said to Moses, for the place where you now stand is holy ground. Imagine even dirt becoming holy because God was near it. But here's the amazing truth and the truth that I want to close with. The Holy Spirit comes and makes us his dwelling place. God himself actually resides in the heart of someone who loves Jesus. Doesn't that make us holy? Doesn't that make us a saint? We've not only stood on holy ground, we are holy ground. As St. Paul says, you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. And so, to all who are in St. Mary's, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
So let us stand as we together say the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious pride. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. God of all hope and joy, open our hearts in welcome that your Son Jesus Christ at his coming may find in us a dwelling prepared for him. Lord, grant us to share in the divine mystery of Christ's coming. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we once again prepare for Christmas, help us to make time in all our busyness for quiet prayer and contemplation, that we may reflect upon the wonder of your love and allow the reality of the Saviour's birth to permeate our hearts, minds and souls. So may our joy be deeper, our worship more real, and our lives worthier of Christ's incarnation and sacrifice. Lord, grant us to share in the divine mystery of Christ's coming. In your mercy. Lord, look with loving kindness upon your church. As we struggle to be a body worthy of Christ's name, we ask you to help us to heal our divisions by focusing on the great panorama of the coming of the kingdom, rather than the minute details of the route we may take. Lord, grant us to share in the divine mystery of Christ's coming. In your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we rejoice in the love of our homes. We pray for all who have enriched our lives by their goodness, all who have accepted us and cared for us. We pray for all who are separated from those that they love, especially at this time because of the pandemic. We pray for all who are alone, that they may know your closeness and peace. Lord, grant us to share in the divine mystery of Christ's coming. In your mercy. <coughs> Lord, we pray for all who are hungry for acceptance, who are hungry for love, all who long to be needed. We remember all who are ill at this time and those who are anxious for them. We pray especially for Alison Brewster and Kim Brown. Lord, grant us to share in the divine mystery of Christ's coming. In your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, you came to earth that in your power and love we might ascend into heaven. Bless those whom we love that have departed this life with the gift of life and love eternal. Lord, grant us to share in the divine mystery of Christ's coming. In your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace 
that in all things we may embrace your holy will and with her rejoice in your salvation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall be upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord will always be. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. 
Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be Lord forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be Lord forever.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. We share in the bottom of Christ. And though we are many, we are one body, because we will share.
promised Saviour. Fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I suspect that most of you um, were expecting a carol service tonight and unfortunately um, we are not going to hold a congregational carol service this evening. The choir and myself will record it this evening and it will be available on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So if you would like to tune into that, please do. Uh, likewise, unfortunately, our speaker for tomorrow evening's Cheese and Wine event has had to cancel, and so there will be no service tomorrow night. Uh, and I've also made the decision not to go ahead with the service of stations of the Nativity uh, on Christmas Eve morning. The service of Chris Dingle will still go ahead. I'm going to be recording that uh, in the next day or two uh, with Buki, and that will be available online at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve. And, uh, uh, where the boxes go from the Spanish. There were little boxes, I think it's more than little boxes will be hand delivered to those who have put their names down and all this stuff will be in there for you to make your crystal and you'll be able to go online with me and watch the children of St. James do a nativity play and Lego making a uh, crystal and a trip around the universe and Lola the dog and a uh, Lyra doing a reading and all sorts of other wonderful things that will fill your hearts with joy as you prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus. And then Midnight Mass will still continue. So the choir and myself will be here and we will await your presence at half past 11 at midnight and we will continue with that service. So please do come to that. You can see that the spacing is adequate. In fact, it is more than adequate, more than is required legally of us. And so you are quite safe. You will be scanned, your temperature will be scanned when you come in, because uh, I bought one of those little devices, and please uh, make sure that you use the hand gels when you come in, and when you come out, when you come in, please take your seats and don't move until after the service, uh, and I will explain a bit my mask how that will work when we come to the end of the service. And likewise, on Christmas morning at 9.45 here, uh, there is a service of worship, um, and um, so please do come to that. Uh, can I just remind you please that if you have got Christmas cards and you would like to hand them out, please do so, but don't leave them at the back of church uh, because they, uh, they pose as a risk. So please only hand cards out to people and if they're not here, then send them in the post. Please don't leave them at the back of church. If you do have chocolate uh, for the Christine, I will be glad to receive it. Or if you would like to give a donation in lieu of chocolate, I'm happy to go and purchase chocolate. So if you have those, please leave them at the back on the front. Um, morning, uh, private prayer is available Monday through Wednesday uh, this week between the hours of 2 and 5. And if you uh, don't mind, please don't enter the church building outside of those times because the chairs need to be cleaned every time they're used and we can then monitor when they've been cleaned and when they have not been cleaned. So please can make sure you only attend church Monday to Wednesday between the hours of 2 and 5 and the services that are available. Thank you. <coughs> going to have our final <coughs>
May God the Father judge all mercy. Make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. Amen. May God the Son coming among us in power reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Amen. As we await our coming Savior, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.